everybody, it's M Class Podcast. Hey, hey, M Class Podcast. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's our new theme song. Everybody, yeah. did you like it? It's a work in progress. We paid seven hundred dollars for it. <laughs> we might have overpaid. Maybe a little bit. I'm your host, Jeff Pennington. I'm your other guy, Josh Pennington. We got married over the summer. Whoops. <laughs> It's legal now. For Look, now. Please. For now. Oh. oh I made no. myself sad right at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, that's usually this happens later. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't think this through too good. If you haven't been listening to M-Class Podcast long, then you might not know that this is a podcast where two guys sat down and talk about Star Trek. Yes. Every and we series. Make funny jokes. This is like a comedy Star Trek podcast, I guess? Not, it's comedy in that we're idiots, but I don't know if like hey, it's no. pure comedy. I'm a you know smart, I mean? smart boy. Yeah, I mean... It's like, it's like yeah. a comedy drama. <laughs> dramedy. It's a dramedy podcast. <laughs> when we talk about the episode or the movie. Uh, this is part two in our Star Trek pilots theme. Yeah, not like pilots. Like I think we say this all the time. Not like you well, say not... this all the time. <laughs> well, there's people who don't know what a pilot is because they're dumb. Yes, if you don't know they're what a pilot is, than us. you're dumber than we are. <laughs> when it comes to that specific bit of knowledge, a yeah. uh, pilot episode is the first episode of a series that's uh, shot in order to prove the concept so that it'll get yeah. picked up by a, a TV station. By a TV man. By TV boys. You boys have got what it takes. Let's make some more Star Treks. You sound like uh, Bones in this episode. Oh, but yeah. But anyway. Oh, Bones. We'll get um, to that. This, this episode is about the pilot episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, Encounter at Farpoint. You're so good at that. You're so good at that. Uh, if you ever watched Encounter at Four Point, uh, stop this and hit play on that. Yeah, turn this off. Go watch that. Come back. Ooh. You're at two, about two forty. Yeah, actually, probably longer than that because of the opening. But I digress. <laughs> uh, let's start with a few facts about uh, TNG in general. Uh, oh, it was actually how interesting. We're not there yet. <laughs> We're not at oh the, no, he has one! We're not at the John Larry Kept Fun Fact of the Week yet. Guys, he has one. That means he has one. <laughs> um, TNG was actually originally theorized as Star Trek Phase 2. They were going to call it Phase 2? Uh, well, originally the whole idea before they started doing the original series movies is that they yeah. were going to bring all these characters back for a television series. Like oh, all the, they were. Like Kirk and Spock and Uhura and Bones oh, and all those fucking guys. fucking God, they didn't do that. They were going to bring all these old fuckers back for a television I mean, series. I don't think DeForest Kelly even was wearing makeup <laughs> when he looked 137 <laughs> years old. It was before the motion picture, so it was a little before this. Okay, okay, okay. But so this is like 78? It was 70. like, it was probably like 80. I should, okay. I don't know. It might have been seventy-eight actually, because it was before the motion picture. Unimportant to the overall scheme of things. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> uh, phase two was eventually turned into the movie series because of um, I, they always say that it's because they felt they felt like movies were a better venue for what they were trying to do. Uh -huh. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's because the original actors were asking for too much money f to be on a television series. Yeah, I mean, if I were the actors too, I'd be like, "Look, I can make a Star Trek movie like once every two years. Like, I can do that, oh, no doubt." But I, I don't want to like show up every day for like nine months <laughs> to make a television show. Oh, you know, <laughs> like Gene Roddenberry. <laughs> wanted to do phase two still even though the movies uh -huh. were still going he wanted to bring star trek back to television yeah uh, probably because he was written out of the movies really heavily like he wasn't allowed to have any input into them yeah you can tell like in in two especially where it's like oh this is this is like star trek like 
but it's limited in its Star Trekness. Yeah. Gene Roddenberry had like a vision of what the Star Trek future was going to be, right? Mm-hmm. And that vision really solidified around the time of the motion picture. Like you can see a lot of prototypical TNG shit in the motion picture. Yeah. Like the weird jumpsuits, the like Akutagram style stuff on the screens. Yeah. Like a lot of this idea of what the future is going to be like right. Gene Roddenberry style. <laughs> uh, so he put he he knew he wasn't going to get his vision into the movies anymore because he wasn't even allowed on a lot probably. They had probably. an armed guard waiting at every entrance for him. He would try to sneak in every day with a fake mustache. <laughs> All right, Mr. Roddenberry, time to go back to your home. I'm Gene Roddenberry, damn it! <laughs> it's not me, it's it's another guy named Bean Boddenberry. <laughs> oh, then come on in. <laughs> uh, Fool me once, Mr. Boddenberry. <laughs> uh, the first episode of, of TNG, the pilot episode, has a lot of um, TOS elements to it. Oh, yeah, it's, I was gonna say, like, um, it's, there's a lot jam-packed in here in this first episode, like, it hits the ground running pretty hard. Oh, yeah. And, like, but yeah, you're right, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, like, just the filming style and the editing and stuff is very TOS. Um, Definitely the filming style. Just, like, the, the music. There's, like, music cues where you're like, what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> There's a like, lot of, Why? like, slow zooms as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. That are really kind of weird, but... Like, when they're re- when they're reattaching the saucer section to the, to the uh, drive section of the ship, it's like, man, like, this is... This is way too much. Like, we gotta go, guys. Like, <laughs> like, come on. There's one shot that, like, we'll talk about in sequence later, but I want to mention it now that's super TOS because of, like... Yeah. It's when they're in the trial, and yes. Picard is looking up at Q, and he has this really pained expression on his face because Q's like, if you don't say that you're guilty, I'll fucking shoot these guys. Yeah, yeah. And there's, like, a day for night filter black over the oh, top yeah. of the screen and it's yeah. like really soft lighting it looks straight out of tos there's a lot of uh sound issues in this episode oh where, yeah like like troy will be i noticed them a lot like like troy is in her seat where she sits on the bridge mm-hmm. and um captain picard is like at the view screen like looking at the camera sort of you know looking out at the view screen and picard must have the mic the boom on him because he's clear and then he, while he's walking back to his seat troy says a line and she's like in a coke can <laughs> she sounds like 20 miles away from you <laughs> yeah she's like uh yo captain <laughs> and i'm like what the fuck what like, troy what they couldn't they didn't adr that they didn't they didn't like they didn't bother to just be like you have to come in and like say that line again and like we have to put that in you know well, it's like a, it's a pilot nobody knows right why yeah. would you spare the effort yeah but they do in the i watched it on netflix i'm sure you did also yes sir they it's the remastered uh ship shots Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's beautiful. It's great looking. It is. And you can especially tell it's the remastered ship shots when you look at any of the planets and, like, the opening crawl and yes. the planet that uh, the Farpoint Station is on. They're, like, almost hand-drawn. Yes. It's cool. Like, I, I enjoyed that. There's a shot, I think, in the beginning of the Enterprise. Like, it pans up, like, reverse Star Wars style to, like, the... Sh- it, like the ship is flying toward the camera and it just looks like it like hovers over the over the front of the saucer and it like it's like a model it's like oh man it looks so clean it and does like, it's, it's like that's the thing is looking. like no matter how much better technology has gotten since tng mm-hmm. like the middle of tng ship shots are still, like, that all the way to the end of Deep Space Nine is still, yeah. like, the best Star Trek has ever looked for space yeah. shots. Yeah, it's, like, because they had real lights in them. Yeah. And, like, you forget that. Like, they made the model with, like, the nacelles, but the nacelles were actual, like, lights, and then they, like, went in later and, like, kind of, like, 
judged it up a bit with whatever technology they had in like 1987 you know it's still it's so beautiful i love yeah it's love cool. love love tng era ships yeah it's the uh it's the the fleet modernization time yeah they're, they're getting rid of all those oldie ships because they're they gotta get new ones now. It's like a hundred years later, and they're still using the Excelsior class, though. What's up with yeah, that? Yeah, they, they use the shit out of those, and the Miranda, too. I yeah. mean, it makes sense. Like, if they still, like, work, like, use them, right? I, like, fuck I, it. I actually have, like, a really <laughs> soft spot for the Excelsior class. Yeah. I think it's a Do really like fucking it? dope-looking ship. I never really liked it. I feel like I'm the only one. It's because it's I like you, the black neck, right? Like the weird like neck part that the attaches. Cowl, yeah, it's like weird. Like I, I don't know. Like I, I can see liking it. It's like a Cadillac. It looks like a Cadillac. Yeah, like, it's it it's looks big. like a roadster is what it looks like. Yeah, it's like lower. Its whole ship profile is lower. It's like than a low rider. Else. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> it's like a, a six four. Put me in a Impala. goddamn space low rider. <laughs> I'm all about it. <laughs> it's pretty. It is pretty, but like I, I don't like. I don't know. I'm. I'm. I kind of like the the newer like uh, Akira classes and stuff like that. Yeah. The smaller, like nimbler looking. They're all right. I kind of like the the giant class. I like the Galaxy class is a really fucking great looking ship too, and it's the yeah. biggest ever. <laughs> yeah, that's a home run, and like. Every ship I feel like after that is slightly not as yeah. Good. <laughs> that, there's a bit of a comparison problem there. Yeah, but it's, yeah, you can't really compare, right? No, I mean, well, <laughs> the other ships were just made to fly around in the background. This the Galaxy class yeah. was made to have a camera on it all the time. Yeah, and it's not fair to like even bring up like Discovery and all that shit, but yeah, it still looks like the novelty pizza cutter shit but whatever uh, yeah it looks it's ralph macquarie made it so i'll mm. make it look like it actually does they turned it down <laughs> in the 1980s but you know whatever uh, there's a reason why ralph macquarie's things are concepts that's because they're not finished yet just make it exactly like the picture fuck it they do that in rebels too like they like like to use that stuff and it's like yeah but like that doesn't make any fucking sense well, it's like, the, the George Lucas problem, right? Where, like, you, they make something good and suddenly you can't fucking say no or you can't say anything negative about it. You just have to accept it at face value as being yeah. genius. Well, this is Disney. Disney's doing the same thing now. Yeah. It's like, what the... what Guys, like, maybe you have another meaning about this and be like, yeah, but make it look like... Kind of look like a, an ad ad. Like, it can't just look like a weird ad ad that just goes away. Like... When did they stop using these ad-ads then? You know what I mean? Like I don't know. It's it's the future. Things have to look slightly different. Yeah. It's different. <laughs> so they know it's different. So the dum-dums know. Anyway. Uh, Encounter at Farpoint is written by DC Fontana and Gene Roddenberry. DC Fontana. And you may know DC Fontana as uh, the Star Trek lady. Wait. Who? Dorothy... Catherine Fontana. Who who is she? She's the writer. Does she, oh, she writes a lot of she, it. Oh, she, she never did anything else. She worked on Star Trek: The Original Series, Star Trek: The Animated Series, Star Trek: The Next Ooh. Generation, and Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. Well, then that makes sense that it's very original series ish. That's true. She um, wrote like a lot of Star Trek episodes from every series, hmm. except you know Voyager and Enterprise. She didn't have anything to do with that. That's interesting. <laughs> but um, Gene Roddenberry, you may know from Star Trek. I do know him. <laughs> and it was uh, directed by Corey Allen, who I read a little bit about. Uh, okay. Not only has Corey Allen worked on like a ton of Star Trek stuff, he's directed a lot of Star Trek episodes. But mm. uh, he's also directed like a shit ton of TV, like all over the place. Yeah. Like, Streets of San Francisco, Barnaby Jones, Hill Street Blues, T.J. Hooker. Yeah. Uh, Dallas, Murder, She Wrote, Magnum P.I. Wow. Like, well, fucking... these are the days of, like, professional TV directors where this is what they would do, right? They would go direct shows. That's your job. Yeah. Like, anything that was shot far and, like, wide and flat was this man. Mm -hmm. It was all him. <laughs> What a legacy. But, um... Wide and flat. That's... 
That's wide and flat over there. You know wide and flat? We gotta get the best wide and flat boy in the game. Who is it? <laughs> get Corey uh, Allen in my office. ready to go. <laughs> anyway, the whole the whole time I was watching this episode, I was just thinking about what would it have been like if all you knew was TOS? Yeah. And you watched this show. Like, how well, mind-blowing would that shit be? I mean, I remember when this came out. I remember being able to think at this time. I was four, and yeah, I remember it, it came being out on. September 28th, 1987. Yeah, I remember it when it was on. I remember, like, being a thing, and, like, oh, Star Trek's coming back, and, you know, and, you know, like, I would watch it, because it was, we got, like, I didn't have cable at this time, because my family wanted to torture me when I was a child. Um, <laughs> so, like, this is, like, one of the only things, like, I could watch, I remember, you know, Saturday, whatever the fuck it was, like, Saturday night, I think it was on. And, uh, I mean, I didn't know, like, I was four, I didn't know, but, like, it has a real 80s feel to it. It does. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of, like, beige, there's a lot of beige and gray. Earth tones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very 1980s television, yeah. like straight lace TV. Yeah, like the set is like the same furniture as in some of the the quarters of the officers as like my aunt had in Boca, Florida, Boca Raton. <laughs> like she had that furniture in the 80s. Yeah, man, <laughs> this television show had to cost under a hundred dollars to produce at this time. <laughs> So they had to just raid Josh's aunt's house. <laughs> Go to Aunt Carol. She's got some beige fucking looking reclining seats that we can use as like the pilot seats. God, they're so far reclined to the point where like Brent Spiner. How are you not falling asleep? <laughs> like Brent Spiner looks like he has the most enormous set of jugs <laughs> when he's driving the ship. Like, it's like you're laying down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like the, like they're like fucking put it on the view screen and they're like I can't see it I can't lean up far <laughs> enough can I put it on the ceiling <laughs> I can't see my little uh, control panel here well we're we're introduced it's the years twenty thirty twenty three sixty four there you go sorry <laughs> twenty three sixty four and we're introduced to space curmudgeon John Jean-Luc Picard. <laughs> He's so annoyed. <laughs> He's so angry the whole episode. Just, I don't like this new ass ship and everything is dumb. And he like walks out of a dark ass shadow into this mm -hmm. it's like ominous? Like he's like a villain? Yeah, yeah, he's he's weird. If it wasn't him, right. if he wasn't talking over it, if there was no monologue, that would be, be so weird. ominous. Yeah. Is he gonna murder the Enterprise? <laughs> Give him back his shitty Constellation class ship <laughs> that he fucking loves so much. But they're headed towards Farpoint Station. We meet our colorful cast of characters that are gonna be with us for the entire rest of the series, like Lieutenant oh, yeah. Tasha Yar. Yep, nothing bad's <laughs> gonna happen to her. She's definitely not gonna get backhanded by a shit monster and die. Nope, she's around for good. <laughs> R.I.P. Um, and we Lieutenant he Worf. Yeah, Lieutenant Worf, who's wearing a red a outfit. Cling on on the Enterprise. That's what That's I was what thinking. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. But like, I was thinking about the people who hadn't watched any of the movies, who had only yeah. watched TOS, and they're like, "I think I'll watch this Star Trek show. Right, it's coming right. back." And they just see this guy, and they're like, "Oh, weird alien." Yeah. And then eventually like, he says he's a Klingon, and they'd be like, B -b what? <laughs> <laughs> they would, they would be, <laughs> it would be like someone's like, I just picture someone's like racist uncle being like, I don't know about this Klingon on the Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're like not ready to accept this fucking you mean, conceit. You mean Kirk? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, but it's like it's like Kirk's wearing a trucker hat, and he's like, back in my day, Klingon stayed on their side of the neutral zone. <laughs> like, he's uh, not ready. Shirt it. He can't. <laughs> Dude, right? Shirt it. That'd be a great... <laughs> uh, we learn 
about all these. We don't learn much about any of these characters, but uh, we yeah. hear that there's several positions missing from the ship, and that'll come yeah, back into play only, later. There's only like one, really. Well, I mean, there's no doctor on board. Oh, yeah. And there's yeah, no blind whatever. guy on board. <laughs> we, don't have the, we don't have the blind guy yet. Um, <laughs> they, they, like, fucking, we learn about Data being uh, annoying as shit to Picard yeah, really quick. They, <laughs> <laughs> they really dose out the, like, here's what's going on. You know, th that really comes quick. I do love, at a certain point in the episode, Data says, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm commenting on everything that happens. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Riker's like, yeah, keep doing it. And I just... Yeah. He should have continued and been like, because we need it for the script. Right, because <laughs> this is how television works now. We have to tell people. <laughs> uh, then a gingham pattern appears in space. A gingham pattern. And Some hound's tooth. This fucking hound's tooth appears in space, and they're like... <laughs> Someone dropped their polyester shirt in front of the Enterprise. And they're like, oh shit, it's a wall! Stop! <laughs> Full stop! <laughs> it's, what, it's what they said. And then it takes Lu uh, Ensign Torres, who... I wonder if that's supposed to be Bolana Torres's father. That wouldn't make sense timeline-wise, though. Wouldn't it? How old is she supposed to be in Voyager? She's pretty young. She's like 20-something, so she could be like a kid. Yeah, she could have been like... I don't know. She could be like 10 That's or so. That's probably like a novel thing. Somebody who wrote a novel definitely noticed that. That they had the yeah. same last name. I could totally write a Star Trek novel. And then it was Lieutenant Torres's dad. And he dun, got dun, frozen. Dun. <laughs> He got frozen like that movie where they sing the song about the snowman. <laughs> I don't know. I know you don't talk like that, Josh. I don't know. <laughs> Just I'm from Philadelphia. <laughs> W-O-D-L. Go down the shore. Uh, Picard's so mad, though. Like, he's fucking like, pipe down that noise! He gets, he gets snippy. He's real snippy snappy. Yeah. And I think, like, you're supposed to, like get the impression that he's no-nonsense, and they didn't really know how to, like, make him no-nonsense yet. I don't know. This episode is, like, really hard to critique, because it's almost unfair. Because they you fix know all these and problems I know. later, yeah. Yeah, you know and I know what the show becomes, and, like, this episode's, like, not bad. It's way better than I remember it being. Oh, yeah. And it's always that way. Like, I'm always like, oh, it's okay. But the first season has, like, four good episodes in it, and this is the yeah. best one by far. Yeah, there's... Oh, man. Then I watched the next episode after this, too, and I was like, dude, what the fuck is going on? What is the next one? <laughs> I forget the name of it. It's like... It's called, like, Ghost Man or something like that. I don't know. It's called I'm something pretty like sure that. it's not called Ghost Man. <laughs> it's not called Ghost Man, but it's just... It's like... Something's going on. I, I was, like, half paying attention, but, like, Wesley's in it, and he's like, why don't you just remember the pattern of the circuits? <laughs> and it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's the whole first season is like that. Wesley's just fucking annoying the whole time. Yeah. He's, like, telling, like, a transporter officer, like, how to do her job, and it's like, yeah, dude, like, I went through fucking space college to do this. <laughs> like, You have zero pubes. You cannot tell me how yeah. to do my job. Yeah. Fuck fucking, you, Wesley. I, I didn't... I was thinking, like, maybe the next episode was, like, the super racist planet, where, like, it's, like... Oh, it might be. Racist stereotypes of black yes. people planet. Yes, that's it. That's the episode. Oh, yes. my God. Yes, I saw that part, and I was like, wait, so they went to, like, a racist version of Kenya? Yeah, <laughs> like, pretty much. Like, wait, wait a minute. And, what like, are they? The, the great king of racist planet wants the white woman... To be his yes. wife, and he's gonna force yeah. her by combat. Like fucking. Yeah, that's rough, man. That's that all. Like age. everyone who was on the Next Generation cites that as the worst episode of Star Trek in history. <laughs> yeah, for good reason. Yeah, that's. You can't do that. This episode actually has a little bit of weird yellow panic in it. Actually. Well, there's the, the when they go to the trial. Yeah, there's, that there's like guy. a dude dressed up like fucking Fu Manchu. Yeah, and he has a a little person friend. There's who who rings his bell. I was thinking when I was watching it, and I was wondering maybe if this was like just me seeing the pre like prejudice where it's not at. But uh -huh. 
they talk about it being after the nuclear panic and how humanity like was mutated because of it. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of little people in the audience. Yeah, it, like, it's... Like, was humanity okay. mutated, and that's why there's little people in the audience? Yeah, that's that's the idea. And I think they also wanted it to seem like a medieval court, right? Yeah. Like, like it's very... Like, they dress very medieval for it being... They, they cite the year as 2078, which doesn't make sense time-wise later. No. Like, they, they haven't figured out yet. There's like, a lot of shit like years. that in this episode, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. So, like, they, they say, like, a weird year, but, like... Yeah, I guess the idea was that, like... There's more little people because the nuclear fallout. Like I don't know what causes like little personism, but I don't like know. <laughs> I don't think it's nuclear fallout. <laughs> I guess they didn't want to like have like actual like I don't know like like freak show people from like the movie Freak Show. You know, like <laughs> they couldn't afford them. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we got jokes in the episode, everybody. <laughs> um, Q shows up. We get our first. Better Q in the very first episode of TNG. Yeah. I always have a hard time explaining that to people who have watched later TNG. Right. And they're like, well, I wonder when Q first showed up, and I'm like, the first episode. And they were like, the whole, fucking the how? The whole series is about... <laughs> it really makes the whole series about Q. Yeah. Which I love. I love that. It's bookended. Like, spoiler yes. alert or whatever. I love Q it. Q comes back. <laughs> I love it. It's, it's fucking great. It's really great. Q fucking freezes Torres... And you imagine Bye. if you got frozen, you would die. But apparently, they just take him to ship the sick bay, and he's fine. Yeah, they like make the magic happen. But they're like, "We're we, everything's great. <laughs> we have a great doctor." <laughs> it's before Crusher even gets on board. Is the thing? <laughs> yeah, they just have somebody do it. Just, some guy. They just have a guy with a hose. Yeah, so, warm water. Just put some warm water on this guy. <laughs> Some, He's got a half Klingon submerge daughter, Submerge him into warm water. It'll be fine. <laughs> He's like a frog. They'll be fine. He'll just come out. It'll be fine. Uh, Q's, like, going through all these, like, transformations into different era uh, soldiers. Yeah, he's, like a, he's like, like a musketeer era, sort of. Then he's a uh, American. He's like a Ponce de Leon. Then he's, like, a World yeah. War Two, And then he's, like, a yeah. 2079 or whatever. Yeah, he's the... Whatever the fuck that shit was. Yeah. Ugh. They wear a lot of padding. Yeah, but, like, what is that gonna do? Well, if you <laughs> fall down and get a whoopsie, you'll be fine, I guess. But otherwise... <laughs> you can do tumbles in the gym and not hurt your head. It definitely doesn't stop bullets, we learn later. No, it sure doesn't. Um, But, you know, the whole idea is Q's telling Picard that they're a savage child race. Yeah. And, uh... They haven't learned anything. That he's, They're still primitive. He's gonna fucking judge them or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but he only gets the idea because Picard says it? Yeah. So what was he even gonna do beforehand? Was he just gonna be like, Alright, you guys are savage child race. Go back to your planet or I'll fucking blow your shit out of the sky. Yeah, I think, I think like, the idea is, like... Yeah, Q's just up to some fuckery. Like he's just up to being some, doing some fuckery. He's just but a like, piece of shit. I don't know. Like I, I always love Q. Like, and I think they ruin him like way later oh, in every fucking, other show. In Voyager, he gets yeah. super ruined. Yeah, but like I love this idea that like he's like kind of like a what's the word? Like a genie. Like he's not like yeah, he's like a trickster god. Yeah, he's not, like, a, a nice god or a bad god. He's just there to kind of, like... But his intentions, I think, are overall... I mean, spoiler alert. <laughs> I think they're overall, like... He really does like humans. Yeah. Like, he wants he, to he help He feels like humans. he's helping them. Yeah. And you learn later he's got more bark than bite, but right now he's, yeah. like, this omnipotent dude who can do whatever and they don't know anything about him. Yeah. Yeah. But he says, you know, I'm going to come back and I'll judge you in the way that you said. Because you mm. told me to do it, Picard <laughs> dipshit. You fucking idiot. Uh, so they come up with this plan to escape. Which, I don't know. It makes sense. But it does. It seems like from what they know about him that it shouldn't be an idea that they come up with. Like, they yeah. know he's omnipotent, but they're like, we're going to fire torpedoes at him and blind him. Yeah, and then we're gonna saucer separate. Yeah, they don't really know, I guess, like what he is, right? So yeah. they kind of are just like, oh, let's try this. <laughs> Probably. 
They're like, ah, we got photon torpedoes. Let's use some of them. <laughs> it's it's all just an excuse to do like a saucer separation because that's what really right. fucking cool that they can the do whole that thing, now. Yeah, the whole thing with this episode is like, look at all the stuff that this ship can do. Yeah, like, look at all the shit that we're gonna do later. Right? It's like it's like the first episode of Power Rangers where they get and they put the the Zord together, and you're like, that's what we're gonna be in for for the rest of the show. Yep, it's showing you Bunch the toys. Of cool shit. Yep. Yep. So you go to your Toys R Us and buy the yep. Enterprise D. Go buy the D. <laughs> oh. Gotta get that D. <laughs> That's what little Josh always said. Mom, let's go get the D. <laughs> I have a really sad story about getting toys when I was a kid, but we should take a break. <laughs> Alright, we'll take a break and we'll be back with a really sad story about toys. <laughs> the adventure continues in disguise. Picard, Data, and Riker are caught in the laser crossfire. It's a narrow escape. Back on the Starship Enterprise, Counselor Troy has the bridge. Suddenly, there's an explosion. Overcome by a parasite, Geordi is out of control. Lieutenant Wolf and Lieutenant Barkley lure him off to sickbay with a holographic image of his friend, Hugh Borg. Calm is finally restored to the bridge. Temporarily. Star Trek, the next generation, bridge playset, and action figures. New from Playmix. And we're back. Josh. Tell us your very sad story about That's getting not that sad. toys. Uh, every Friday... If I don't cry, you're off the podcast. Um, okay, I'll see you later. <laughs> every, every Friday, I used to go get a toy because I had to go to the eye doctor every week when I was a little kid. Damn, really? Yeah, because I was legally blind. Jesus. Um, so, yeah, my I have amblyopia. Blea, amblyopia, like my my right eye doesn't work. It's fucked up. So I had to go, but I so I had to go to the mall and like the toy store in the mall, and I'd get a Ninja Turtle like every week. There's so only four kinda, of them. No, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go get a Mouser. I needed brain. I mean, okay. Crane. I needed. This brain. is all making sense to me now. I needed Shredder. I needed. Uh, the fly guy, what's his name? Baxter Stockman. Baxter Stockman, thank you. That's it. That's my sad story, is I was blind once. I'm glad Still, you're I'm not pretty blind. I'm glad you're not blind anymore. When I when I went to the eye doctor they would like they were like, You're never gonna drive a car, that's what they told me. Why would you tell a child that? <laughs> they wanted to freak me out. Jesus. What what are they gonna scare you straight from? Being blind? Well, they wanted. They had like this thing where they like had made me wear an eye patch, and shit. I had oh, to wear. Yeah. I, so I had to like wear an eye patch on my eye that wasn't fucked up, so my other eye would get strong. I had to Goku my eye basically. Yeah, you had to put weights on your eye. Yeah, I had to. I had to piccolo my eye. I had to wear those shoulder pads. <laughs> <laughs> and my doctor's name was Doctor Yelasowitz. I didn't make that up. That's that was a real cool name. name. And she was a bitch, dude. Oh Jesus. She was a mean ass. Fuck. <laughs> Dude, I had an eye doctor when I was really little who was like, yeah, he's, uh, he, his right eye is just a lazy eye. He needs to wear an yeah. eye patch on his left eye. And my mom was like, uh, okay, well, we'll try that. Uh-huh. And, um, she took me just on a whim. I guess she thought maybe she needed a second opinion to a different eye doctor. And the eye doctor was like, oh, he's got a fucking astigmatism. Right. In his right eye. An eye patch is not gonna help him. Yeah. And well, that's what they did to me, so <laughs> the first the first doctor was like, nah, that guy's a quack. <laughs> you said that? Yeah. And it turns out I do have astigmatism in my right eye, so yeah. who was the quack, Dr. Genoa? Who was the quack? <laughs> You need to go to Yelasowitz, dude. I only, She'll tell you. I only know his name through stories that my mom tells me because I've had glasses since I was fucking four years old. So. Yeah, that's that's how that's how I was too. Like I had to wear, like imagine going to fucking kindergarten with a fucking eye patch on your face. That Jesus. yeah, it's real great, dude. Great. I've been wearing glasses long enough that when I got them, like four eyes was an actual insult that like hurt your feelings. Yeah. So. And now everyone just is like, yeah, I wear glasses constantly. I wear them to sleep. <laughs> People fucking get glasses with no lenses in them so they can yeah. look like they wear glasses now. I know! So it's, it's totally okay and cool to wear glasses now. Yeah. And that, yeah, I know. Which I'm psyched about because. Yeah, it's, it's great, but yeah. 
It's real Not cool. Five. It's real cool that I don't have to get called horrible names anymore. <laughs> At least for that. Well, I still have to wear an eye patch. So when is that gonna get cool? Uh, wearing an eye patch has always been cool. There was a guy named Snake Pliskin you might have heard of. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't know about Snake Pliskin when I was four. You also don't look like Kurt Russell, which might oh, come to I look come better. Be a problem. Yeah, of course you. you're much more beautiful. Thank you. I'm just going to say that that's what you were thinking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway, Star Mark. Wars. <laughs> Star Wars? <laughs> um, the whole idea is that they're trying to get away from Q, who yeah. is a ball of light. Yeah, he's like a thing. That now. doesn't really like come a, back, but uh, no, they got rid of that one. They try uh, just to escape from him using the Enterprise's super awesome engines. You know how the original Enterprise would almost break into pieces when they went warp seven? Well, yeah. this shit can go warp nine. It's two more than seven, bitch. It's way better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, however, this is still not good enough as the Q orb can get to warp 9.9. .9. Yeah, which it doesn't even need to. Like, no, he could just teleport. But he could just don't know fucking be there. Yeah. Uh, I love. The <laughs> it happens later, but I love when Worf stands up and points his phaser at, at the screen. The <laughs> I love the little tiny remote control phasers. Those are so funny. They were like, what can we do to phasers what can to we... make them look stupid? Well, they figured out a way to make them look even more stupid later when they turned a hand vacuum cleaner into the phaser design. I'll take, I'll take well, yeah, a little bit later. I'll take that, though, over that dinky little... Oh, I like, will, what too. The, what the well, fuck are you doing with that thing? The original series had a... Um, like a garage door opener as a That's as right. the small phaser as well. That's it right. fits into the top of the regular phaser. That's I know right. that because I have that toy. So yeah, because I'm cool. And they use one of those bullshits in the in four with the door, right? Yeah, like, it's a Klingon version. Yeah, and they melt um, the door with it. But uh, they can't get away from him. So Picard comes up with this brilliant, cool plan to do the saucer separation, yeah. which works out. Sure. They, uh, but the thing is that Q only really wants Picard and whoever's around him anyway to be in his dumb trial. Yeah, he doesn't need the rest of the people. He, he doesn't care. It was never going to be about that. Like, the, no. the Enterprise is never in danger. Not really. Because Q would just be like, I can just, like, warp you back home. Like, I, don't, I can do whatever the fuck I want. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Actually... You know who's in this episode? Miles O'Brien. Yeah, he's got a red shirt on. A lot of people wearing the wrong colored shirts in this episode. Yeah. I mean, that's a Star Trek staple, though. Like, lots of that goes on, yeah. right? Like, Especially everyone's with wearing background actors. Shirts. Yeah. The background actors switch uniforms every episode. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, whoever, it's whoever has the key to the prop room. <laughs> and whoever gets in there first. I want to wear blue today. I'm a blue guy today. <laughs> uh, but, like, Q just teleports Picard, Troy, Tasha Yar, and Data into a simulation of, like, a World War III courtroom. Yeah. 2079? That's, it's like, yeah, it's 78, I think, but I would say it makes more sense to be 2048. Probably on like the timeline. Um, yeah, on the on the actual Star Trek timeline because like, twenty sixty one is first contact. So why would there be? Yeah, you know, that, that make wouldn't any be sense. When was the Bell riots? Twenty fifteen? Twenty no twenty twenty? Soon they're coming. Yeah, they're com <laughs> They're definitely coming. They're they're literally coming. <laughs> but um. <laughs> I've, I've always felt it was a little bit weird that they're having a trial for, like, the grievously savage race of humanity, and yeah. two of the people that are on trial are a half-betazoid and an android. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been like, uh, can I leave? It makes sense for Data, I guess, because, like, he's kind of like the product of humanity. Like, yeah. he's kind of like I mean, it makes, humanity's child, It right? makes sense for uh, Troy in the same way, then. She is half-human. Yeah, I... I mean, I guess they just wanted them to be there. I don't know. I fucking hate Tasha Yar, so I don't... <laughs> I don't have... You know what? 
I've always said that I never had much of a problem with Tasha Yar, but Denise Crosby is, like, the worst actor in this episode by far. Yeah. Like, some of the extras are acting better than she is. Yeah, she's rough. Like, I'm not a big fan of hers. <laughs> in Star Trek Online, she does tons of voiceover work, um, as both Tasha Yar and Sila. Yeah, the, the, the Romulan. Romulan. Yeah. And, uh, she's, she's not great in that either, so. It's... There's a reason why, after she left the show, she was in, like, three B-movies and then fell off the face of the earth. Yeah, she didn't play those cards too good. Jeez, yeah. <laughs> but she's, uh... She's very angry, so she gets frozen. Oh, she gets all mad. She's like, well, you should be sucking the Federation's dick! <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Like... They they weasel their way out of the trial a little bit, right? Yeah, they kind of like, uh, what's the word? Like Perry Mason their way out yeah. of this one a little bit. Like Picard's <laughs> like, you should give us a test to right. see if we're really savage. And Q's like, fuck, that's a really good idea. All about that shit. He's like, I love this shit. That's awesome. So he sends <laughs> them all back to the to the ship, and O'Brien's mm. like, hey, we're headed to Farpoint Station. Yeah. I hear it's pretty dull. Nothing bad <laughs> definitely happened a second ago. We're just in the battle bridge for no reason, so... <laughs> it's a weird transition. And I think it's supposed to be like they don't know that... Uh, like, O'Brien doesn't know that they left. Like, it's like yeah. time, no time pass or whatever. But, like, it feels goofy. It's like, wait, what, wait, what is happening? <laughs> like, Shouldn't O'Brien at least be like, wait a second, are we on the battle bridge? What the fuck? <laughs> Well, he, he he knew he was there, right? But yeah, like, yeah, but like he's acting like nothing happened. Like nothing just happened, right? Yeah. Literally nothing just happened. Like we definitely didn't just deal with like an almighty god creature and do like right. a saucer separation to escape from it. Right. It, it, like they're just oh, we're just gonna head off to our new thing now. Yeah. Well. Anyway, we That's flip weird. on over to Farpoint Station. Meanwhile, at Farpoint Station. <laughs> Uh, the name of the planet is Deneb... Four. Four. Deneb Four. Um, <laughs> Everything's four. That's true. Or six. Four, four makes sense, because, like, that's, like... Earth is the third planet, so I guess the, you know... Well, uh, that's the thing that I always wondered. If you name a planet, like, Deneb Four, are there mm -hmm. four, like, three other Denebs? In the system. Yeah. So the star is named Deneb. That's okay. the name of the star. That makes and sense. And then the planet is the fourth planet. Omicron Percy I-7. Omicron Percy I-8. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and we you meet... know what they say. Women are from Omicron Percy I-7. <laughs> Men are from Omicron Percy I-9. Uh, what a great show. We'll talk about that it. show soon. That could be another podcast. <laughs> we'll just do a, you'll just do a million podcasts. You can't, though. It's not on Netflix anymore. It sucks. Uh, nothing's ever going to be on Netflix anymore. No, like Everything's really making bad. its own streaming service. It's really smart, meaning really fucking stupid. Yeah, people will definitely pay for just one mm -hmm. part, like thing's content on its own streaming service. Sure. Of course they will. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> anyway, we meet uh, William T. Riker, a baby-faced... Uh, uh, commander yeah. with piercing blue eyes and a chiseled bod. And his chin has an anus because it's a butt chin. True. <laughs> True. Uh, we also meet the funnest named character in the show so far, Groppler Zorn. Yeah, that's some really <laughs> stupid sci-fi shit. They definitely used a name generator for that shit. <laughs> Back in 1987. <laughs> Crop Lord. They're in his office, right? And they're, like, talking about the station wants to be... I'm not really sure, like, what... Like, they want to the deal is, with like, the Federation, the right? Groppler wanna... Zorn and his people want the Federation to use Farpoint Station so that they uh, can, like, I don't right. know, have the Federation's protection and resources. It's right? like a staging point, right? Like, it'll yeah. be like a, a... Yeah, yeah, gotcha. And, uh, he's talking with Zorn, Groppler Zorn, <laughs> and Groppler Zorn says, would you like a piece of fruit? And Riker's yeah. like, ah, I'd like an apple, but you don't got one. Yeah, you only have a stupid banana and, and like, a peach. 
fucking <laughs> with your grapefruits, Rikers, yeah. fucking eat one. Yo, take the peach. It's the best. Hell yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I probably would have taken the banana. Oh my god. You Fuck you. Don't, don't you dare speak to me. <laughs> you gotta wait till that thing gets a little brown. Don't you, you ever banana. speak to me. Um, but, gr <laughs> like, on Groppler Zorn's desk, there is a bowl of apples, apples. that just appears. Yeah, it just happens. And Riker's like, uh, was that there before? And Groppler Zorn is like, uh, definitely. Yeah. For sure, definitely. It was totally in there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but Riker is like asking him all these questions, and he's giving him all these like really fucking shitty half answers. Which yeah, is, he's like clearly hiding something. <laughs> he's yeah, clearly like, like really over dramatically hiding something. Yeah, yeah. But um, like Riker goes over to Far Point Station, and he meets up with uh, Beverly Crusher, Doctor Crusher. Yeah, and Dr. her son, Sexy. Ron Weasley. And her son, this fucking idiot who I hate. I fucking really, really wish he wasn't in this show. Pick anybody else. Pick fucking Fred Savage. I don't know. That would Somebody right. else. But, like, the best part about this is, like, Crusher is a huge fucking asshole to Riker yeah. for, like, no reason. <laughs> yeah. I guess they're the same rank, right? Yeah. They're both commanders. Yeah. And, um... Like, she apologizes to him and all mm -hmm. when uh, she sees, she calls him like, a kiss a, ass. She's like, you're yeah, being a kiss ass right now. Stop being a brown noser. Yeah. Because he uh, wants, he's like, some shit's going on. And she's, she's like, come on. She's like, this fabric <laughs> would look really great if it was, like, gold or whatever. Yeah. And she looks away and she looks back and it's gold. She's like, oh, shit, you're right. Right. Anyway, <laughs> bye. And leaves. <laughs> And uh, then, like, Jordy LaForge, we meet Jordy LaForge, and he comes up, and Riker's a huge asshole to him for no reason. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> you better salute me, motherfucker. <laughs> and I guess what I learned is that if you spend any time at Farpoint Station, you become a giant asshole for no reason. Yeah. Like, they're, like, flexing nuts, and it's like, guys, this what? This is ever. unnecessary. <laughs> You're all gonna be bestest friends soon. Gonna be poker buddies soon. But uh, Riker gets up on the ship and he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna fucking kiss so much ass. It's gonna be great." <laughs> and uh, the, the like Tasha Yar is an asshole to him for no reason. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. And she's like a lieutenant, and it's like, wait, what? Like, he's like, oh, I, I hear some stuff went down, and she's like, well, that's for the captain to tell you. Yeah, it's like, damn, man, this would have been rough. like, I would have been like, tell me right now, motherfucker, I'm your superior officer. Yeah, you gotta, like, just fucking tell me. <laughs> and Picard is like, doesn't even turn around to speak to Riker when he comes in. Yeah, this is all like this, like, this alpha shit. He's doing the mind games with him. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so Riker watches the episode that we've seen so far on a screen. <laughs> yeah. It's just the footage of the episode. <laughs> Meanwhile, 20 minutes ago. And it's like really poorly edited as well. So if you watch that, you have no idea what was happening. In yeah, because the there's like, because there's like other scenes that they can't show, right? Because like. That wouldn't make any sense. But Riker like, goes to talk to talk to Picard, and Picard still won't fucking give him the time of day. He's yeah. like, uh, get out there and attach the saucer manually. Yeah, he wants him to do it by hand. And Riker's like, we have like systems for that. Yeah, it just does it. <laughs> Picard's like, no, you do it. The ship is magic, it just does it, so let's just do that one. <laughs> let's let's just risk everyone's life on this ship, <laughs> so that I can just fucking hang dick on Riker and show him I'm the captain. Yeah, man, gotta hang that dick. <laughs> <laughs> gotta hang it somewhere, you know. But uh, Riker does it. Everybody looks like they're gonna piss pants. But yeah, Riker and it's does like, it. It's like you guys are Starfleet officers, right? Like you know how to fly a ship. So like, what's the problem? <laughs> like. I don't know. It was, just fly it, it really slowly toward the thing. That's all you have to do. <laughs> I can't even imagine, like, an example of something that would be like that in real life. Where well, they would do that to uh, when, like, uh, they would go to the moon, they'd have to do that shit. Yeah, but I mean, like, in your everyday life, where, like... Uh, when I go to the moon, Jeff, oh, I have to... <laughs> God, this motherfucker in his moon house... <laughs> 
<laughs> flexing nuts and hanging dick at me. I guess like truck drivers, right? Like they gotta do weird shit where they gotta fit know. stuff but in this shit. If they fuck up, they don't get killed though. Is the right? They don't have like a like a antimatter reaction no, going on. They don't. Under them. They don't like attach their truck to the fucking truck bed while going 80 miles per hour down the freeway yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That would be awesome. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, but Picard basically just, like, shits all over Riker, joking, like, not jokingly, but, like, pretends to shit on him yeah, to see his reaction. To yeah, he wants to see what he's gonna do. There's a lot of, like, Picard seems like a huge dick up yeah. until this point in the episode, and then he starts to show a little bit of humanity. Yeah. When he's like, I don't like kids. He's Yeah, he basically is like, you gotta make sure I don't make a fool of myself in front of these kids. Which... They're setting up, what they're setting up is the the, cr the Crusher shit, and, like, they're kind of setting up the, is Captain Picard gonna have sex with the Doctor? Like, that's gonna, like, yeah, be a the, thing. the answer's no, by the way. The answer is no, right, but... It's the only, like, somebody pointed this out to me earlier, it is the only will-they-won't-they they in television history that was a won't-they. Won't yeah, yeah, it's true. It's pretty, it's pretty cool, though, because it's, yeah. like... Yeah, like, he doesn't want to... They just had one episode where they're like, we're definitely going to fuck now. <laughs> <laughs> the and episode where like, they get stranded together, yeah, right? And they have the yeah, and they have the same thoughts. Like, they're thinking yeah, they're each other's they're thoughts. trying to bone each other. Yeah, yep. <laughs> she shows anyway. up in that sweet doctor sweater, and he's like, I'm going to get me some doctor titties. You know what? I can't blame him. <laughs> she's She's super hot. She is a very beautiful lady. I would wish she was my my mom. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, mean, I was trying to say like three different things. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, then the star of the show shows up. Yes. DeForest Kelly appears as I'm so goddamn old <laughs> as fucking ancient bones, Methuselah bones, <laughs> who is 134 years old. God damn, he's old. And he's like, I feel like DeForest Kelly was like, he forgot how to play Bones between the movie and this. Yeah. Because he's just like throwing out the heaviest southern accent, like hamming it up as hard yeah, as he it's can. Yeah, hamming hard, dude. And <laughs> like, he, he does like, he does this great line where he says, Troubles? Troublesome? What's so damn troublesome about not having not died? died? Yeah, there's a really great lines. And, and when he's, yeah. <laughs> and he's still a racist against Vulcans. Why is he there? Why the fuck is he there? He's a fucking admiral, right? He's there to, like, s check the ship over or whatever. Oh, he is? All right. Yeah. And that guy's old as dirt, dude. He maybe needs to go home. <laughs> <laughs> like, take a nap. Oh, he's 137 Seven. Years old. He's 137. He needs to take a is... fucking dirt nap is what he needs to take. <laughs> well, he did in real life, like, yeah. pretty soon after this. Oh. He's the, he's like the first one, right? Yeah, but there were several movies after this, though. Yeah, there's two more movies. Yeah, two is several. Fuck you. <laughs> um, but he's he's still a racist against Vulcans, and then he leaves. Yeah, he's like, I look. It's pretty funny because he's like, he's like, you're a machine, aren't you? And he's like, Dave's like, yeah. And then he's like, almost as bad as being a Vulcan. <laughs> It's like, Jesus fucking Christ. He's also still wearing, like, super fucking flared bell-bottom uniform pants. Yeah, and he's got these dope shoulder pads and oh, elbow yeah. pads. It's like, man, I want some fucking clothes with some shoulder pads and elbow pads. You could get those. They make them. Yeah, well, where are they? They're not in my house. Oh, uh, well. If clothes aren't at your house, they probably don't make them. <laughs> That's uh, true. But, like... Object permanence is a mystery to me. <laughs> Don't look away from your computer screen and microphone. Wait, what were we doing? Oh, no! <laughs> uh, Q shows up and he's like, Picard, time is running out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he wrings his hands. Yeah. 
<laughs> and that's when that's when Worf pulls a gun on the view screen. Yeah, he fucking and, and gets fucking yelled at like a child. He, he is like a hundred percent like a child because he's like, I will learn to do better. He's like, sorry, Captain, I will do better next time. And, and Captain Picard's like, yeah, you will, because we're gonna be out here for a fuck ass long time, dude. He's like, we're gonna, and then like Worf is like, and sits down, and I'm like, why are you angry? What about what he said was an insult to you? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Fucking Worf. Like, proto-Worf over here is getting fucking pissy. Yeah, it, they didn't know what to do with him yet. They were just like, make him a dumb Klingon. Because, well, it's all we saw so far, so... Yeah, yeah. Um, Riker and Picard have a little bit of a chit-chat until Picard introduces Riker to Troy, although they've introduced their genitals to one another before. Oh my god, this is like the weirdest scene in every in any Star Trek. This is like the weirdest shit. I don't know about that, but this is it so is weird. weird. This is super bizarre, and it's like, Jesus, what? Like, she just starts <laughs> mind-talking at him, and he's just like really trying to be professional, and she's just like, remember when we fucked? Yeah, and then she like probably shows him an image of like his dick going in her pussy. <laughs> Damn. And he's probably like, I'm trying to talk to the captain. He's getting like half chub over here. Josh <laughs> is like writing a new version of this episode that's just way better. <laughs> way better. <laughs> <laughs> and she calls him like a weird name. Like, is that, like, what is that? Oh, Imzadi is like, uh, it means soulmate in Beta Zoid. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. There you go. I didn't know that. Yeah, I know about Star Trek. <laughs> um,. <laughs> Imzadi, huh? You're my Imzadi, Jeff. Oh, I, I hope that it does mean soulmate and it doesn't mean like fuckboy or something. Well? 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 Are you gonna say no to that? Jesus Christ, the podcast is over. It's time for fucking. <laughs> Put your wife to bed. It's time to Imzadi. <laughs> Shared it. Um. <laughs> We Groppler Zorn is back again, right? Yay, <laughs> Groppler! Um, and he's like fucking. Uh, I don't even know what. Ha like he's like, he wants the Federation to like join with them somehow. I just don't know how exactly. Like he wants the planet to be part of the Federation. I think that's the idea. Yeah, yeah. I think it's he wants. It, basically, what I got from it is he wants. The Federation to be cool with all the weird shit going on. Like, he just wants them to be like, like, don't worry about it. Everything's cool, man. And it's, and everyone's like, wait, but there's like apples and shit appearing out of nowhere. Like, yeah. some fucking shit's going on. And I mean, like, the fucking, what is the name of the, the species? Uh, the, like, Groppler Zorn species? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, the, the Bar C? Barleys? The, Something like that. The Bar Barleys? The, the Barclays. Reginald Barclays. Fuck, what is their fucking name? I just it's like a it's like one word. Yeah, I don't remember, but they're like living in fucking like stone huts in a on an old town or whatever. So yeah, uh, yeah. obviously they could probably use the Federation's help. But uh <laughs> you know, you can't just enslave a space creature and pretend yeah. like it's a space station. Right. Shit doesn't work that way. Yeah, that's like super against the Federation's rules. Yeah. Like, you can't do that shit. And uh, the Groppler Zorn is like, look, if the Federation isn't going to parlay with us, then maybe the Ferengi will. Right, it busts out a Ferengi, and you're like, what is that? Yeah, I don't know what that <laughs> is yet, but Picard says, fine, let's hope you they find you as tasty as they did their last associate, which oh. doesn't really fit anything anymore. But at the time, people were just like, oh my god, they eat people? That's scary. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. They're they're bad news, guys. <laughs> it's hopefully it doesn't turn out weird when they're like five feet tall and yeah. they're like goblins. <laughs> but uh, we get the famous scene that comes back a couple times later in flashbacks where Riker meets Data in the ship's holodeck. Yeah, and Riker is really fucking blown away by the holodeck, even though in Star Trek canon. The holodeck has existed since Star Trek the Animated Series. Yeah. So, it's been a hundred years that the holodeck has existed. It would be like if somebody was like, here's my automobile. 
automobile? And you were like, holy shit, this thing runs on gasoline. That's, it's kind of how I kind of think of it. And I'm not trying to make excuses for the show. But how like, dare you? <laughs> I kind of think of it as like like the uh, the automobile analogy. It's like if someone drives a Tesla, and you're like, oh yeah, wow. that's true. Like somebody, this, is, this is cool. It doesn't right. even have to be like a Tesla. It's like if somebody comes up in like a fucking Lamborghini or something, right, and you're right. like, holy shit, oh, wow. this car's this is, amazing. Yeah, this is really nice. Yeah, so it's I mean, like the holodeck on the ship is like the top of the line holodeck. Yeah, it's like the new like the new new. <laughs> and I mean, they had to explain. It to the audience in some way. They couldn't just have somebody walk through a door and there'd be a holodeck and he doesn't right. even react to it. It's super fucking confusing, yeah. Riker grew up in Alaska anyway. They probably didn't have any holodecks up there. Yeah, their holodeck was look out the window and it's fucking snowing, bitch. <laughs> um, Riker and Data talk about the holodeck. Uh, Wesley shows up because Gene Roddenberry has to self-insert into the episode. <laughs> And he he falls into the water. Yeah. And the water comes out of the holodeck with him. Yep. And I guess it's real water. I they guess. Kinda, they, they talk kinda about like, that. Yeah, they kind of talk about that, right? They're like, the transporter can dismantle matter in, into energy, so like, why can't we just make simpler matter out of things? Yeah. Like, the holodeck works by, like, imaging and force fields and transporter usage, right? Right, right yeah. Which seems like it would be a massive drain on resources for recreation, but what the fuck do I know, right? I'm yeah, no, well, they kind I'm of no talk LaForge. about that in Voyager, right? Like, in Voyager, they're like, can't use a holodeck all the time, but then they wind up using the holodeck yeah, all the time. do it constantly, so... Yeah. They, all the time, literally. Uh, Wesley <laughs> wants to go to the bridge, because he's a fuck. Mm -hmm. Crusher takes him, and he touches shit when he's told not to, and Picard's made out to be the bad guy for telling him to get off the bridge. Right. You're, like, in the bridge of, like, the most powerful weapon of mass destruction. There are really, 2,000 right? people on board that ship. If you yeah. press the wrong button, everyone gets shot into space. Yeah, don't do that. Don't touch stuff. <laughs> Jesus. Like, another ship shows up, and uh -huh. Groppler Zorn says that the ship he doesn't know about it it's unexpected never heard about it yeah and uh it just starts firing on the bandy is the name of the it. bandy like that's the old right. bandy city yeah bandy cam yeah the weird <laughs> the weirdest shit happens in this episode where they're like the ship starts firing, and they're like, holy shit, it's firing on Farpoint! Shields up! Red yeah, alert! Yeah, and then Worf weird. goes, wait, no! They're firing on the old Bandy City! And then Picard's like, alright, hold that. <laughs> and I'm like, are there no yeah. people in that city? <laughs> yeah, it's really... But there are people! They're talking about heavy casualties! Yeah, it's really fucked up. It's, it's like, they didn't know like how to like write this Star Trek like like they don't know how what they're doing yet right Not and yet. this is like yeah. kind of one of those ones where you're like ugh like, this is this could have been done yeah. way better like in 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 later Star Trek they'd be like Worf would be like oh he's firing on the old Bandy City and they'd be like well, what the fuck is it doing that for right I but mean they kind of do that but they they just let it forever yeah they just let it yeah like they would be Picard like all right we like, gotta stop it somehow yeah we have to figure out what's going on like i don't want to shoot them right the, or the, whatever they talk about it being like it might be a violation of the prime directive but then they decide it's not but yeah. before that conversation like 10 minutes passes of it firing on the city it's just hammering this city this model city <laughs> and like after that conversation q shows up and they talk for another 15 minutes yeah. while the city's like, getting you're bombarded gonna shoot him. yeah he's like i knew it i knew you were going to shoot this motherfucker <laughs> i knew it but humans like, are bad groppler zorn whose name i love saying if you haven't noticed that's your gets, new name gets my new name is groppler zorn everybody it's gonna be <laughs> like he gets teleported away and they're like holy shit where did he go did he go into that other ship in space let's go find out <laughs> did he go into the only other place that's in this show right now <laughs> i guess we should go to that place so they go there and it looks exactly like underneath the far point yeah, station it's all the same right? they start putting Let's... that two and two together yeah, and then they get Deanna Troy to be like, oh my god, this thing fucking loves to hate this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he 
he's so fucking horny for hate. <laughs> Damn, he is so satisfied with how much he hates this son of a bitch. And, like, Q is just this whole time, like, man, you should totally fucking shoot that thing, yeah, right? He's fucking with him. Because yeah. you're a savage piece of shit, and that's what you do. Yeah. But they finally figure out after. They got it. After the alien life form ship teleports everybody back to the ship. <laughs> that it's alive and it's mate is what they made Farpoint Station out of. The yes. bandy are a bunch of fuck boys and they made How did they get this thing to do all this shit? I don't know. They would know. feed it, right? They would yeah. just feed it enough energy. They like these things are There's called a... a general term for these things are called because I do a mission in Star Trek online is a cosmozoan. A cosmozoan? Other instances of cosmozoans would be the crystalline entity and those weird like troglobite things oh that yeah mean. the like space manta ray things yeah those things yeah anything that's large large space like that like lives animals. in space yes yeah. yes that's crazy <laughs> but um the Q's just constantly like fucking they're lying kill it just fucking kill it kill yeah. groppler zor and kill him being a real backseat Kill guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's your new name. <laughs> Backseat kill guy. Fuck yeah. Let's uh, go, Groppler. Fuck. <laughs> I feel like you got the good straw on this one. You pulled the long straw. <laughs> yeah, um, I did. They figure Pull out. long straw every day. Oh my god. <laughs> When I jerk off. We, we got it. We got it, Josh. With my penis. Uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> they figure out that the, the space-dwelling being, the, mm -hmm. the, the cryptozo... What is it? Cosmozoan. The Cosmozoan. I, think, I don't think these have a name. Star jellies, they're called sometimes. I'm looking it up. Maybe, uh, but... These don't have, like, a name. But, yeah. Cosmozoan's sort of like a... Catch-all, yeah. It's like saying mammal, right? Like, it's... Okay. Whatever. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, my question about it is, like, Groppler Zorn talks about how uh, the thing doesn't understand him when he tells it not to make what people want. Right. How did he get it to make Farpoint to Station? do all the things. Yes. Yeah. I th I mean, it's not really important, I guess, to the I, overall I, plot, but it's just... I think the reason it's doing that is to to cry for help, right? Yeah. Like, it's slowly being like, oh, look, there's apples now. And, like, I'm people are like, people oh, that's weird. Yeah. yeah. In a way that will still make sure it gets fed. Right. But anyway, uh, it turns out that Farpoint Station is made out of the, crypt the Cosmozoan's mate. <laughs> And yeah, and then they space fuck. They definitely touch dicks. <laughs> touch space tentacle dicks. Yeah. It's and then beautiful. they fly away together. And like everybody's watching it fly away and it keeps cutting back to it. And I just wanted them to like raise a tentacle and like wave by as they're flying. That's away. exactly <laughs> what it feels like. Dude, I thought the same fucking thing. I was like, this is so cornball. It like, really it's is. So like, I wanted, I wanted them to wave by to yeah. it. Buy space jellyfish. It just jellyfish. turns around and waves and then turns back around. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking uh, stupid. But it's it's over and Q's like, alright, I'm leaving, but only because I want to leave, not because you told me to. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, dude. <laughs> but I'll be back. And he leaves. Dun, dun. Yep. Um, Picard and Riker have a heart-to-heart Mm -hmm. about how they love one another and then they kiss and then the episode's <laughs> over. Yep, and Picard says, let's kiss some more in space. I feel like this is a really good introduction to what TNG is gonna be, though, right? Yeah, no, this, this episode is... Uh, you know, it's 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 not great. No, but it's not it's not like as good as a lot of TNG episodes. But only because there are amazing TNG. Oh like, yeah, that's the thing, right? Like, as far as eighties television, though, like this is great. Like, this is great. It's a television. good episode of TNG. It's good, 
but it right. is a great episode of season one TNG. Yeah, for yeah, because dude, oh, oh my, oh my god, <laughs> season one is like a trial by fire. You just have to get through it. It's rough, man. I skip it usually. Yeah, I I, I, I usually tell people to probably start out like season two. Season two gets better than season I do too. one, but I do season, season two, three yeah. is when it really catches on. Yeah. But they really uh, got their shit together. I feel like people were probably getting deja vu pretty heavy listening to this episode because there was a previous podcast that went over this. I don't know what you're talking about. Josh, you know exactly what I'm fucking talking about. Fantasy fiction? <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> no, there was this little show that some people uh-huh. might remember uh, yeah. called Syndication Station. Yeah. And I was not on it, so it wasn't any good. Well, but you good talked thing- about Star Trek on it. Yeah, we talked about this episode. I don't remember anything we said, so that's cool. <laughs> it's like it didn't happen. I don't. Cause I literally don't remember anything. It has been a long time. I remember we talked about the uh, the soldiers and the drugs and the loving drugs, and I think I think Dom was like. When the guy gets shot, he was like, I love drugs! <laughs> so he, like, <laughs> sniffs his last drug. He really know? does. Yeah, he's like, I'm gonna hit one more hit before I die. I remember we talked about that. That's the only thing I remember. I didn't even from- talk about, like, he just gets, like, shot to death. And, ev- like, the, yeah, with the Garrett- Enterprise crew who's there are all, like, oh, just yeah. shocked. Well, they keep shooting in the air, and it's like, God damn it, that's annoying. Like, that's stop like it. So many bullets you're wasting, and it's yeah. World War Three. You need bullets right now. You're just being a cocksucker with that gun right now. Yeah. Like, quit it. <laughs> There's a lot set up in this episode that, like, plays out over the course of the series. I mean, yeah. like we talked about, the final episode of TNG is a bookend to this yeah. being the first book. You it's, know? like, literally... A bookend in almost every respect, right? Yeah, it's I like, mean, it even goes back to it very right, heavily. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah, I, I, the, I don't know. Q is is great. I love Q. So, I do too. I, a lot of people that I talk to seem to find Q kind of annoying, and yeah. I feel like that's probably because of Voyager. It's because of Voyager. Um, yeah, this this series though, like he's he's a great character. Like and he's only used once per season, right? Through all of TNG, which I think showed a lot of restraint. Yeah, because you could just easily just be like, well, let's have Q be on again. You know, he can do whatever the fuck he wants. So get him. That's something I thought about the whole time I did my last view through of TNG. Mm-hmm. Was uh, why don't they think Q is responsible for stuff at all? Like right, when they shit kinda happens, just assume he's gone, right? Yeah, like when shit happens throughout the rest of the series, the first thing I would think of, like in my list Ew. of things, is like, <laughs> okay, this is a space virus. This yeah. is some sort of sabotage from the from the Romulans, or this is Q. <laughs> it's like your captain's checkbook. <laughs> mm, what could it be? Uh, is it is it a space virus? No. Are we hallucinating? No. I think the next Are we trapped episode... inside the holodeck? No. <laughs> I think the next episode is a space virus episode. It's the naked yeah. time or the naked the, now. The naked now. That's what it yeah. is. Ghost man. What the fuck was Ghost that man. <laughs> yeah, the naked time is the TOS episode. And the naked now is this one. Yeah, because it's now. Get it? <laughs> right here, right now. Watching Star Trek on my Netflix. <laughs> Pick it up for 1995. Josh sings the oldies. <laughs> sing some fucking 80s songs, but I just talk about Star Trek. <laughs> Star Trek oldies with Josh Henderson. <laughs> Only three payments of 1999. <laughs> A bottle of Kirk, bottle of Picard. <laughs> I'm going to get real drunk and watch some Star Trek. God damn. <laughs> it's just like what I do every day. <laughs> it's just about the shit that I do when I'm watching Star Trek. You know, the funniest part is people would definitely pay for that. Oh my god, they would. <laughs> people would pay for that in droves. Oh my god, we have a we have a real idea on our hands now. Ooh, we're going to be rich, baby. <laughs> I got an idea. Going to be money makers. 
<laughs> um, the thing that sticks out to me in this episode, probably not the most, I would say, uh-huh. but like pretty heavily, is Tasha Yar yells at Picard a lot. Like, She's real that's, angry. That's pretty. It's pretty ballsy for a lieutenant. To be yeah, doing. She's, she's like, this is why I don't like her, because her character is like, like super proto Kira, right? Like, yeah. This is like that. if Kira like, was like a twelve year old. It's like, like proto proto Kira because yeah, like, Ro yeah. Laren is proto Kira, right? It's like it's like on the evolution scale with the the like you know the human evolution. You, you know, everyone knows what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, like the, yeah, yeah. The, the, there's like the monkey, and then there's the, the slightly hum- more human monkey. There's like. It's like Tasha Yar, Ro Laren, Kira. Is she's fully erect, right? Like she's like, I'm fully erect too. Um. <laughs> as soon as you said fully erect, I was gonna start a timer to see how long it took you to make well, a joke took, about look having a fully erect penis. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, it's not a joke. I'm doing the podcast with a super boner right now. Okay, my mistake. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I feel like I'm making light of your boner, and really, that's a heinous crime. It is. It's a heinous crime. Uh, <laughs> but, like, I just, I can't stand, like, her character is just, it's two-dimensional, man, right? Like, it's just so, ugh. Ugh. I hope some tar monster kills her soon. <laughs> oh. uh, it does happen. And I hope she never comes back. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. She does come back. She comes back all the fucking time. And then her sister is in the show. Oh, yeah. Her sister shows up and is like a villain for one episode. Yeah, she's a bad, a bad guy. Oh, well. That's like season six, and it's like, oh, what's happening? What's like, going why on? are you here? <laughs> yeah, why are we doing this? What does this have to do with anything? Yeah, it's dumb. I don't know. Um, Real dumb. I'll tell you what. Uh... How about I give you guys the much lauded John Larroquette fun fact of the week? Oh my god, fucking finally. Jesus. (laughs) The John Larroquette fun fact of the week is that DeForest Kelly had gone into probably a dozen interviews in 1986 Uh talking about how Star Trek The Next Generation was like a fucking blight and it would never be the true Star Trek. Yeah, and uh, then he set up a meeting, uh, like a meeting with Gene Roddenberry specifically to ask him if he could be on the Next Generation. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and Gene Roddenberry was like, "Didn't you say it was shitty?" Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, but uh, I need the airtime. <laughs> I don't know how, how he, I can't do a fucking DeForest Kelly. No, I can't either. But it's. Like, he's, he wanted to be, like, a guest star. He wanted to do a guest role, like, real bad. And Gene Roddenberry was like, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And he was like, but we can't really give you much money. And he's like, well, I'll take scale. Right. He wanted to be in it so bad that he took scale. It's, dude, I, 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 all these Star Trek actors are so weird. These are, like, seriously, they're weirdos. Like... They hate it, but they fucking love it. Yeah, it's well, it's like a career thing, right? Where, like, you gotta make money. You wanna do something right. different, but you still have to make money. Right. So, so, you eventually you're gonna have to fall back on it, because that's what you're known for. Dude, if I was in Star Trek, I would Hugh Jackman the fuck out of it. I'd be like, you want me to play fucking that character? Hell yeah, let's go. I'll be Wolverine for 40 years, dude. dude I don't you give would, a shit. You would fucking Tim Russ the fuck out of it. I would, you would Tim Russ. I'd, <laughs> dude, Tim Russ would... I would make Tim Russ look like fucking... Uh, what's his name? Christian Bale. Like, he's picky as fuck about yeah. movies. Yeah. I'd make Tim Russ be like... What? The other guy. The other method actor. <laughs> From There Will Be Blood, who's like retired now. Oh shit! Uh, Why can't I think of his name? Because I'm an Abraham idiot. Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Why can't That's I think of his real name? Oh my god! We're doing that thing where we can't both can't remember. You know what? Stupid. It doesn't matter. <laughs> he wasn't in Link. Star Trek, so it doesn't matter. Lincoln movie. <laughs> People at home are screaming at us. Yeah, right now, by they're the way. really fucking mad about it. But you know what? Like, like, it's yeah. Daniel Day Lewis, you idiots. That's his name. Daniel Day Lewis. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> Solve that one. Oh well. Um did you, oh here's another John Lair kept fun. Oh wait, wait, for wait. You. How interesting. <laughs> Industrial light and magic did the optical effects for this I, episode. I did know that. I knew that. But uh, they were actually um, credited in every single episode because they use footage from this episode in almost yeah, every episode. All the time. Yeah. Throughout the rest of the si- rest yeah, of the show, there is. If you can find it on YouTube, there is a, a mini documentary that I think was on PBS. Maybe it was on. Um, LeVar Burton's show, Reading Rainbow, where they talk about how they do, like, the uh, effects and shit with the models. Yeah. You can find it. It's somewhere. It's on the internet. You can find it. Trust me. It's oh, it's wow. cool. It's, like, super 80s and shit. Oh, I don't doubt that at all. They're like, here's what we're gonna do now. And then they, like, you know, the camera looks like shit because the cameras were made out of, like, <laughs> sticks back then. <laughs> they made Amish cameras out of wood. <laughs> they would rub two sticks together and get visuals from it uh, somehow. God damn, they were masters of their craft back then. <laughs> <laughs> but th- th- those are your John Larroquette fun facts of the week. Oh, how interesting. <laughs> Josh, what, where does TNG stand in your hierarchy of Star Trek series? It's my number one, for sure. It is, it's my number one as well. Yeah, it's, I, I love Deep Space Nine, but I mean, this, this series is the shit. Like the rest of my list is probably very different than yours. In the probably hierarchy. you probably have TOS next. Yeah, right? two is TOS for me. TOS is probably last for me just because I didn't watch it that much. Oh wow, what a fuck. Well, I don't know. Voyager's really bad. Yeah, I don't know. It's for me. It's like it's TNG, TOS, DS9, and Voyager and Enterprise are in like a a tie for last place since I didn't really watch Enterprise enough. Yeah. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get there. We we're will get, get the, there. The Enterprise. Is are we done talking about TNG? About I don't know. Encounter at Far Point. There's not. I mean, th- this this episode's pretty good. It's as far as a pilot goes, it's really good. I think. I don't know. I think it introduces like, these characters in a really good way. I mean, they're like yeah. prototype versions of the characters that'll grow into the characters we know but that's what a right. pilot episode is really. yeah that's fine that's totally fine I when I watched it I was like oh this feels very much like a film like they treated this as a film which is cool like yeah you don't often get a lot of that like it, it is very much like a film it has an A plot and a B plot yeah, which are it, yeah. both completely fleshed out which is something right. that most episodes of a show don't do right and it, it's, it just feels like a movie which is really cool um so i don't know like i this episode isn't great but it's not terrible it's my favorite star trek uh pilot for sure i think it does a better job as a pilot yeah. than any of the others oh for sure i mean we'll talk about it next time with deep space nine and deep space nine pilot is sort of like i mean deep space nine is such a like a saga that like you can't really yeah and the Deep Space Nine pilot is very much like like this cavalcade of wacky characters that we're introduced right. to. Right. And it doesn't really... It doesn't follow the theme of the rest of the show as setting no. itself apart. No. The, the theme of the show, uh, a lot of the... Is, too, is like change and like dealing with change and overcoming like your prejudices and all that stuff. So like... I don't know. It's it's a journey. Like Deep Space Nine is more of a journey, where this is more of like, uh, this is gonna be my family now, right? Like yeah, this is these like, are my friends, and I want to go on this trek with them, which is great. And it's yeah. like different settings, different feelings, and I feel like this pilot definitely gets across that feeling of what TNG is. Yeah. Better than DS9's. I'd say DS9's Ab- is absolutely. very TNG flavored. Yeah, because it's... I, I, and I don't know if that's because they, they didn't really know what they were going to do. I, I like to think that they... like Out of all the Star Treks, like, DS9 is very... Like, this is where we're going. And we totally have an idea of where we're going. For a couple seasons, you're like, well, let's get there already, right? Yeah, but like, exactly. But like... You know, at first it's a little... You gotta take it a little slow. Baby steps. 
but this is very much like here's here's where we're at. It's just going to take us maybe two years to like make some good episodes. <laughs> it's it's a great starting point for yeah. TNG. Yeah. Whenever I'm giving people a recommendation of what to do with TNG, I always say watch Encounter at Farpoint first and then skip to season skip. two. Yep, do that. That's exactly what I do. But I think that sums it up. Yep. For Encounter at Farpoint. Uh, it's super fun. I love Captain Picard. <laughs> I had a conversation earlier about who um, I would put forth from all of fiction to represent humanity. Captain Picard. And it would be Captain Picard. Yeah. He's fucking the best human man ever. Best human yeah. man. He wins the award for best human man. I agree. <laughs> and it's like, the whole Kirk and Picard argument is like, that's not really pertinent to who I would put forth on a universal yeah. scale to represent humanity, because I feel yeah. like they're fairly equal in my mind. Yeah, they're equal, but it's, I think we talked about this before. For me, it's sort of like saying like, oh, who would you rather, like, you know, talk to the UN, uh, Woodrow Wilson... Or uh, Queen Victoria, <laughs> like or Qu uh, Queen Elizabeth. It's like they're both like important historical figures, but like one of them has a better perspective historically about. Yeah, I guess you know that's what I mean. True. Another one would. It, it's just their times are not the same. It's like a hundred years later of human yeah. move of humans like growing and learning and right like going out into the universe and gaining more knowledge. Like of course Picard's going to be in a better position. Yeah, he's just going to be not as cowboy ish ish. Like Shat like uh, I almost called him Shatner. Kirk's um, Shatner, the Captain Shatner. Kirk's like cowboyish really comes more from like the in like second half of season three in the movies. He doesn't the do movies, a whole lot yeah. of cowboy shit in the series. No, no, no. But... Yeah, no. I know, I know. I, I just, uh, I, I, I think that like there's this like it's such a weird. It's super interesting. It's almost like how we as like people in America anyway romanticize the West. Like we make up complete lies oh, about yeah. things that never happened oh, in yeah. the West. Like, gunfights. Fucking never... That fucking shit never happened. There and we, no we showdowns at noon. People just yanked their guns yeah. out and shot at each other. They just murdered each other, like yeah. regular people do now. Like, they just shoot each other. But, like, we, we make up complete lies about that. But I think we also kind of make up a mythological lie about Star Trek TOS and how it's all, like swashbuckly and all this adventure and it's cowboyish, you know? Yeah, the it's only not. The only swash that gets buckled is in the naked the fucking naked time when uh, Sulu gets the sword yeah. out. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it, right? And But like there's they reference it in uh, a couple episodes of uh, Voyager when, when they go back in time to Tuvok being on the Excelsior Janeway's like it's it was a different time then like people just did di like crazy stuff and it's like yeah no like okay so it's like this myth perpetuating another myth it's like yeah. such even a in the strange, show it's like yeah. a myth perpetuating another myth it's weird right like it's super weird I feel like DS9 treats it a little bit better yeah when, when they do Trials and Tribulations they mm. they treat the TOS era a little bit better like they're reverent of it like they're uh, they're they're not talking about how they were cowboys on the fringes right. of rules and shit they're talking about like all the accomplishments they made in like meeting right. new species and diplomatic shit right it's not like then they went out and had a phaser battle it's yeah you know who had a lot of phaser battles? The crew on Deep Space Nine. <laughs> yeah, they had, like, the most phaser battles. Um, however, speaking of Deep Space Nine... Yes. Uh, the next in the pilot episode theme series is going to be Deep Space Nine's first episode, Welcome to Deep Space Nine. <laughs> I don't know the... I don't know it. I'm sorry. I don't know it either, honestly. I'm I, not, like, huge on the names of episodes, especially when there's, like, a hundred of them. Yeah, uh, I try like, to have, like, a okay knowledge of the yeah, episode names, but I'm not, I'm not great at it. 
Emissary. Yeah. That's the name of it. Emissary. emissary yes. Um, I said emissary, and Siri came up. Thank you, Siri. I'm not. I don't want you. Go, go away, Siri. No <laughs> one invited your dumb ass. <laughs> yeah, the pilot episode of Deep Space Nine, emissary. So you have to watch that before you listen to our podcast. Yeah, you're not gonna know what the fuck we're talking about. So uh, make sure to watch that for next time. Also, make sure to listen to the other podcast that's going to be following this one called M Class Emails, episode emails, 4. Emails, 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 emails. Where we answer your emails that have probably nothing to do with this episode, but we connect them anyway because it's important, damn it. Yeah, yeah why not? Fuck it. Do whatever, let's do whatever we want. We'd, we're in charge. You're in our you world now. Yeah, do your own podcast. You're in the fucking Scatman's world now, baby. Ski ba ba be da pop. Ba 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 da pop. Ski ba ba be da pop. Holy shit! We're on the radio now. We got a fucking soundboard. Welcome to Jeff and Josh in the morning. Whoa! Hello, everybody. Farts, 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 farts. Oh, I have that one too. Oh my god. <laughs> it's a new I like, world, everybody. I have like three sound effects. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Alright, see you next time, guys. See you next time on the next episode of M Class Podcast. Bye. Bye. <laughs>